We'll stay and answer questions for as long as anybody wants to. So, can we get the uh, presentation on the screen there? On the screens? There we go. So I'm going to be introducing Peninsula Clean Energy. Uh, we say it's the most important change you'll never notice, and you'll see why uh, in, in a few slides. So Peninsula Clean Energy, what is it? Uh, basically, Peninsula Clean Energy uh, is what we call a Community Choice Energy Program. It allows customers, uh, allows municipal governments and the county governments to aggregate all of the customers together within their jurisdictions to procure electricity uh, and generate electricity on the uh, to be sold and from bought and sold in the whole, from the wholesale market. The goals, as you can see here, from Peninsula Clean Energy are to uh, generate and procure cleaner sources of energy, electricity, uh, which will mean lower carbon emissions. And we'll, our goal is to do this at competitive, if not cheaper rates than, is, than are currently available from PG&E. It will also offer a choice where currently none exists. So right now, today, the only energy supply option is with PG&E, but with community choice programs, you have a choice. You can either go with Peninsula Clean Energy or with PG&E. So why is the county looking at this and why are we getting uh, so much interest in the part of city governments? One is it's uh, reducing, it can help reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. Uh, it can uh, help improve the um, ability for local communities to control from where their electricity is sourced. And it can lead to more stable electricity rates and some often lower electricity rates. We're also seeing for the community choice programs that are being run in other counties, and you'll see a couple of examples of that in a moment, uh, creating local jobs and creating uh, local, developing local renewable energy projects and all the economic benefits that are associated with that. And it basically helps accelerate the move to a cleaner energy future. So how it works, as I said at the beginning, uh, Community choice programs, they aggregate, they pool together all the homes and businesses within their jurisdiction uh, to create an entity of, of program that goes out uh, to the wholesale market and procures electricity and can generate electricity that is then uh, transmitted over the existing uh, transmission and distribution lines of the utility, in this case Pacific Gas and Electric, and delivered to uh, the homes as it, as it is right now. So. The, this, the community choice program only deals with the generation and the supply of electricity. Uh, the delivery of electricity is uh, still handled by PG&E, so they are very much a part of the mix in this, uh, under this model. <clears throat> so we get a lot of questions about this, so um, will I have a choice? Uh, the answer is yes, as I said at the beginning. Uh, under, but there's a very important point here, under state law, which created the community choice energy programs, all customers, uh, if, if let's say South San Francisco joins Peninsula Clean Energy, all homes and businesses uh, that are being, currently being served under what we call bundled service from PG&E are automatically enrolled into the community choice program uh, unless they ch choice. choose to opt out. It is a choice. Um, so the, um, uh, under state law, the, uh, the community choice program is required to have a minimum of four opt-out notices. That means that we have to send at least two letters to every consumer before the program launches and two after the program launches to notify them that they can opt out and go back and return to pg e service at any time. Even after that initial uh, notice period, anybody can switch back to pg e whenever they want. So, um, yeah, so it is, it isn't, uh, uh, the, the opt-out part of it is, under, is a requirement of state law, um, but again, it's your choice currently, there is no choice, but with uh, Peninsula Clean Energy, you can choose where, which your, uh, what your electricity supplier is. <clears throat> so, the, um, again, people do ask this question, the um, PG&E, again, still, has a, a role, they still actually provide the billing. If the power goes out, uh, you call PG&E. If you smell gas, you call PG&E. Uh, you'll still see all the blue trucks running around town. That is, uh, they're very, and, and they are responsible for uh, maintaining the transmission and distribution lines. So 
again, still very much a part of the mix, and as I think you'll see on the next slide, you actually receive a pg and &E bill. So your bill will, will look very much the same. This is one of the reasons why we say it's the biggest change you'll never notice. Uh, and this is actually an example from the, uh, the first community choice program that was launched. That was in Marin County. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe a little hard to see on the slides there. But if you look at your uh, electricity bill, there are a few different sections. One section divides your electricity charges into the generation charge and the delivery charge. Again, the generation, the cost for generating electricity and the cost for delivering that electricity to, to your home. You'll see there, it may be a little hard to see, but the, um, the top line there in the, in the green rectangle, that is the, uh, the PG&E delivery charge. Again, that remains the same. The bottom line there is the MCE generation charge. So in other words, the only line item on your, char uh, uh, on your bill that will change will be PG&E generation charge to, let's say, Peninsula Clean Energy generation charge. Um, there also is, and, that, and there's the little inset there. I can get more into this in a minute, but there is a voluntary opt-up option where if you pay a little bit more, you can have your 100% uh, of your electricity demand met by renewable resources. In this case, this, this customer pays one cent more per, per kilowatt hour to have, to have that extra renewable energy put onto the grid on their behalf. So will I pay more? Uh, so I, we'll see now in, in, uh, in the next slide. Uh, one of the things we say is that we cannot 100% guarantee that from now until the end of time that the Community Choice Program will have generation rates that are always lower than PG&E. However, the operational experience to date with the other Community Choice Programs has shown that the vast majority of the time the generation rates have been lower. Uh, the, um, and you'll actually see that on, on the next slide. It is true also that the Community Choice Programs to date have had uh, a, a mix of electricity that is higher in renewable energy content and therefore lower in greenhouse gas emission content than would otherwise be the case. Uh, all of the uh, uh, low-income programs, for example, the CARE program, those are eligible to Community Choice customers just as they are eligible, just as PG&E customers have them now. So that will not change. So there are uh, three, well, actually soon to be four community choice programs in the state and, and many more that are in development. Marin Clean Energy, as I mentioned, they've been operational since 2010. Uh, Sonoma Clean Power uh, started last year, I'm sorry, in 2014, middle of 2014. And then Lancaster Choice Energy, which is down in Southern California, started just last year. And uh, the San Francisco Community Choice Program, or Clean Power SF, we expect to launch later this year. Um, all three of these programs, well, uh, let's, start, let's start with the two programs that have been operational the longest. They have uh, lower rates, actually th all three programs have lower rates, and Marin and Sonoma have uh, started a fairly impressive pipeline of developing locally developed renewable, primarily solar uh, energy projects. So uh, there are kind of two key points here on this slide that I want to emphasize. One is the fact, uh, the, the rate fact there, and the other is the renewable energy content. So if you look um, at the first column there, or the second column, you can, see that, you can see that all three programs have, at least in 2015, have had lower generation rates than PG&E. Uh, Sonoma actually has been a quite a bit lower. They're 6 to 14%, depending on the rate class. Uh, now, as we, as we said, we can't guarantee that will always be the case, but we expect, based on the technical study that was developed on behalf of Peninsula Clean Energy, that we'll see a pretty similar uh, rate, likely rate situation uh, at launch for Peninsula Clean Energy. Now, keep in mind that PG&E is right now about 27% of their total electricity delivery comes from renewable resources, which, relative to the rest of the country, is, is pretty good. Uh, Marin Clean Energy, which has been around the longest, their base product, the, the baseline that they deliver uh, is 50, about 56 percent eligible renewable energy. And they do have a 100 percent, as I said, 100 percent renewable option that you pay a little bit more for. And they also have that's under development right now, 100 percent option where you can, you can pay quite a bit more, but actually have 100 percent of your electricity demand met through a local solar project. Marin, um, <coughs> Sonoma and uh, Lancaster are starting out, they're newer, they're starting out about 36% 36 renewable. 
uh, and they also have the 100% opt-up option. And you can see there are just some of the cool facts that Marin has about over 200 megawatts of primarily solar power that is developed, uh, not in necessarily in Marin, but around the region, around the state, that they estimate have, have created about 2,400 jobs. Uh, Lancaster, which again has been only operational for months, already has a 10 megawatt solar project under uh, uh, in their pipeline. And Sonoma actually, for reasons which I can get into, have ha has had a really impressive mix of uh, um, uh, low greenhouse gas content in their electricity mix, for again, reasons I can get into. Uh, anyway, so the point here is that we have uh, local projects being developed, local jobs created, uh, lower rates, primary, predominantly lower rates, and higher levels of renewable energy content than is currently available uh, from PG&E. Another question we get a lot. So I've got solar panels in my house. Uh, is that gonna change? If I join a community choice program, if I'm enrolled in a community choice program, does that change? And the answer is no. So typically, the way uh, most solar customers have it, if you've got solar panels on your roof, you um, sell excess electricity to the grid, uh, and uh, during parts of the day when it's really sunny and, and the demand, uh, your solar output is higher than the demand in your house. And if at the end of the year you're, you're, of a, you're a net positive uh, energy generator, uh, you get credit for that. That will continue under uh, community choice programs. Uh, the, the case for Marin and Sonoma, which again, they're, they, they've been operating the longest, and what we suspect will be the case for Peninsula Clean Energy will be that the rates that are offered, the net energy, as we call it, net energy metering rates, will be higher, will be more generous than, uh, than is currently being offered by PG&E. Again, the idea there is to incentivize people to install more solar on their house or install solar in the house. So that will, um, uh, that will continue to be the case for Peninsula Clean Energy customers. Will my taxes increase? So it's very important to note that uh, all the community choice programs are completely um, uh, supported through rate payer dollars. In other words, the rate payers uh, by paying their electricity bills, completely support these programs. Both Marin and Sonoma, again, I use them as examples because they've been around the longest, have been, um, have been generating net surplus revenues and building up a reserve over time that they can um, uh, use to uh, reinvest into the local communities, to have as a rainy day fund, basically to decide what they want to do with those uh, surplus revenues whether it's building new projects, creating new programs, giving it back to the ratepayers in the form of lower energy prices, those are all options that, will, that can be decided by the, uh, the board of directors of the community choice program. So what happens next? We have been going around, uh, as I said, been giving many presentations like this to city councils, uh, to city staff, <coughs> um, to educate them on what this program is to make sure they're aware of uh, uh, the benefits and, and, and the, re the responsibilities that they're taking on by joining such a program. Uh, so far, we've had 12 cities along with the Board of Supervisors representing the unincorporated part of the county, uh, officially passing the resolution ordinance to join Peninsula Clean Energy. Uh, we have asked cities to decide uh, whether they wanna join now it's not a requirement, they can choose to join or not, but to ask them to, if, to make, please make that decision by the end of February, the end of this month. And the reason is because uh, the goal is to launch the program by October, and in order to do that, we need to, um, uh, we need to figure out exactly what the load requirements are gonna be, how many megawatt hours are gonna have to be purchased, and to go out and to be able to procure that electricity on behalf of the customers, and that takes a lot of time and a lot of contracting and negotiation and all that. So we're asking folks to uh, let us know, or cities to let us know uh, if they will join Peninsula Clean Energy by the end of February. And that is my presentation. So uh, again, I want to try and be brief, but I'm happy to answer any questions that people have. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I apologize for that. Um, Mike Futrell, your city manager. Uh, it is not uh, staff's job to stand up and advocate one way or the other. 
but this is a matter being considered by council and it is your city staff's job to research and verify and validate uh, the data that uh, county is bringing forth. Know that county has for the past year and a half been doing research in the entire county uh, and has gathered up all the electrical data usage for all 20 cities plus county um, and has uh, put that together into a model and brought experts on board uh, and come up with a projection of how they think this will work. Uh, well, the first thing your city staff did was get that research and boil it down to say, what does this mean for South San Francisco? Uh, our homes may be a little uh, different in size than say homes in Woodside and other parts of the county. We definitely have a different energy usage pattern than the county as a whole. So we wanted to boil that down. Uh, your city staff also met face to face with PG&E uh, to get their take on it and go through it with them. Uh, we also met with individuals from Marin County to hear their experience, because as noted, Marin County has been doing this for about six years. Um, and then we wanted to boil it down into something that I could understand. Uh, what does this mean to me? Uh, I live here, I own a home here, and it basically came down to this. Uh, under the model, which we have disaggregated and put it just for South San Francisco people, um, it's about a 5% savings. Uh, that th is the model is showing. And that has been the experience uh, in Marin County and the two other uh, organizations that have already kicked off. So if your electric bill is say $100 a month, uh, you would save about five bucks a month. If you're a business and your electric bill is $1,000 a month, then you'd save about 50 bucks a month. That's the expectation based on the model uh, using the experience from the clean energy programs that are currently running. Um, and this is at the 50% renewable rate, meaning your 50% of your power would be from renewable sources, uh, and that is estimated to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases by 10,860 metric tons. Uh, as mentioned, I think there will be an option where you can voluntarily pay a little more, get 100%, and of course those tons would go up. But that's completely up to you. So again, I'm not here to advocate one way or the other, but I did want you to know that city staff has looked at this very, very carefully. We've interviewed other people and we just broke down the data to something we could understand for South San Francisco. So um, with that, um, you know, PG&E validated that basically they're still in the energy business. Uh, if you have direct billing with PG&E, that will not change. If they're taking money automatically out of your checking account, that will not change. Their phone number is the same. Uh, if there's a power outage, they're gonna show up. If you have a deal with them on solar, that still remains the same. They will still operate programs for low-income individuals, for example. Uh, if you want to sign up for level billing, any of those programs, that all stays the same. And it, it, we wanted to sit with PG&E and verify that, in fact, all of that was true. But I'll tell you, I'm not the expert on this. I'm relaying what staff has said, and I'm really going to let the expert answer questions. I'll start to kind of go this way. <laughs> go ahead. So the delivery fee from PG&E, yeah. now, is it, that's something that would be new, right? No, you're, you're, currently, you're currently paying that now. We are. Yes. That will not change. I that. Yeah. You have to look it's sort of at a different section of your bill. You're probably seeing tier one, tier two, et cetera. You know, but if you look at the question, Oh, sorry. Uh, the question. Yeah. Right, I think so people when they ask questions, if, we, if they can come up to the microphone, that would be. But the question was, um, the delivery charge on that bill, is that new? And the answer is that is not new. Uh, you currently have that same delivery charge on your uh, current pg e bill. Hi, my name is Joan. We have a family member who has a place up in Casadero, California, that's Sonoma County and their bill is higher due to this clean air thing because of the delivery. And you're making promises that we can stay with PG&E. If that's so, is this gonna be an Obama one where they admitted later they knew it was a lie? If you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor? Because I plan to stay with PG&E. 
Well, that is. And I don't want to be told I'm forced into a program. My relative's bill is higher by about 15% every month in Sonoma, and they hardly ever use it because of delivery. Well, uh, so the del and why were we given less than a month to be able to come and speak and they make a decision for us? Well, I, I um, you know, in terms of the Sonoma, the data that I've seen from Sonoma Clean Power is that the generation rate, which is the only part of the bill that the Community Choice Program handles, is in fact lower. If it were higher, uh, and uh, they could certainly opt back out, uh, back to PG&E at any time, uh, as could you uh, if, if South San Francisco joins Peninsula Clean Energy. Well, that's absolutely you're right. Excuse me, my name is Margaret Baxter. Uh, my question is, is this a private company that is going to be running this clean energy? No, it's a uh, public agency. Uh, it's a joint, uh, operate under a joint powers agreement between all of the member jurisdictions. So it's, it is not a for-profit enterprise. So it's, a, it's going to be the people at the top is going to be getting big fat salaries and big fat pensions. Nope. Thank you. Uh, so all, all of the salaries of the community choice uh, uh, energy employees from the other programs, those salaries are publicly available, uh, and they're like they're listed like the salaries of any uh, public county employee. So no, there's nobody getting a rich salary out of this program. A uh, question here: For a PG&E offers a reduced rate for uh, electric car owners, will yeah. PCE offers si similar program? Very possible. Uh, again, the the way. Uh, the rates are set that is determined by the board of directors, the mem you know, elected officials from each of the jurisdictions, and they will be ap approving the rate structure. So it's very possible that with net metering, there could be an advantageous rate for electric vehicle charging as well. That will be determined at, at that at the rate setting time. A couple of questions and uh, comment. <clears throat> comment first. Um, South San Francisco will recall, uh, and about 15 years ago, or or possibly more, <clears throat> we had another similar program that was uh, brought in and uh, quite a few of us gave uh, input. I said no. And uh, right after that, we had major problem with the power grid. And one of the culprits who caused problems was not pg e It was really the foreign suppliers of electricity and energy who did things as a result, we had surges, we had drops, we had all kinds of things. I remember when we didn't have uh, enough electricity to rely on so that you know we'll have our refrigeration system in the house. I still remember, I don't know how much of this new system is going to be like that. That said, 5%, uh, even if it was up to 7%, is not a whole lot mm -hmm. for us to agonize over. I mean, if it's really all that great, then why isn't it really cheap? like 25%. So it's really not worth it to me. I'm not gonna worry about it. I'd rather have pg &E. The old saying is, I'd rather have the devil I know than the devil I don't. <laughs> well, I, I, so we now have uh, six years of operational history with community choice programs. There's never been any pi uh, power reliability problems. Uh, it's true the rates aren't 25 or 30% cheaper. Um, but I, it has been shown and audited that the, uh, the environmental uh, profile of the electricity is better than PG&E, and that's just you know, a factor that people should take into consideration. But you're right. You can stay with PG&E. That is absolutely your right to do. My name is John. I'm a 30-year resident of South City, and I'm curious about PG&E. Are they... What is their real position on this? Because I don't find them that real trustworthy after their debacle in San Bruno. Yeah. That was yeah. their you know, they're not really, they're not really a, no, they're not a quality company no more. I used, I worked in every powerhouse. Can I speak? I got the floor, please. Okay. I've worked in every powerhouse and facility they have in Northern California. And I can tell you, they're not the quality company they used to be. So if you're putting your faith in them, it's like a blank check. I wouldn't do it. Anything that's 
an alternative that we can explore, we should go for it 150 percent. And that's it. That's the truth. You can. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. Point. That's why you have the prerogative, the choice of not well, opting in. they're not lying to but us. But no, you know, PG&E, I don't trust them. That's the bottom line. No, I'll go with this gentleman. And if our city council cared about us, we So, Seth, welcome to South San Francisco, where they care about their uh, Yeah, this choices. ain't a rebuttal back but let's, and forth. Let's, 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 um, let's try to keep, um, I mean, I, I enjoy the discourse, but... To have a productive evening, there are so many people here. When a, a, a gentleman or lady are speaking, making a comment, or asking questions, um, they don't need to be interrupted. Yeah, That's I didn't fair. interrupt you, in all fairness. Okay, so so we won't be talking to each other. We're going to be talking to the presenter and, and okay, we're, I'm, we get I'm our information. Okay, you guys, but it, it's for them to hear, too, because they're the residents. We are the people. Yeah. It's for us. Uh, it's it's it, right. Uh, you you can make your comments, and I actually enjoy your comments. Um, but you really should be if you if you turn around and engage, this meeting is going to fall apart. Okay. And we'll get we won't get the information we, right. we could if we just stay focused. It's okay. We're civil. <laughs> so I'm just curious. What is their real position? Are they going you know head over heels for this, or are they kind of tentatively going about it? Well, so, so publicly, I think that they are, uh, you know, community choice programs, they, you know, they have to be supportive and, and work with them and partner with the community choice programs. Uh, in the past, when Marin Clean Energy launched, uh, um, PG&E were very much against it. They, they helped put on uh, Proposition 16 on the ballot. Uh, that was defeated. <clears throat> and partly as a result of that, the state legislature passed a law, SB 790, that, that severely restricted the ability of uh, the investor-owned utilities to uh, market against these programs. So uh, today, you don't hear too much from PG&E, and I, I can tell you that uh, you know, from my, when I talk to people in Marin and Sonoma, they have to work with PG&E every day because there, there's billing coordination and all of that. So, so it sounds like they wanted to control the market. Yeah. Well, so I mean, there there it is, folks. I mean. How much more can you uh, label it the way it is? <laughs> They're not a quality company. Okay. Go ahead. I'm called. I'm talking to our next door neighbor who couldn't come tonight, but several years ago she uh, went to the new system and she was committed for a year. Well, when the bills came in, the actual bill was lower, but the rental fee brought the bill higher because they had to rent the wires that the power was coming through. Right. So, um, so she wants to know. Will that be the same if she changes to the new system this time, or will wires be changed so a rental fee won't be charged here? So I'm not exactly sure of the program that she's referring to, but again, the, when you talk about the wires, that is the delivery okay. part of it, and that is completely maintained and handled by PG&E. And she had to pay a rental fee to PG&E for that service. Uh, yeah. It was on the bill. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I'm not sure exactly what the program she's, what she's talking about, but again, the community choice program, there'd be no rental fees. All they're doing is putting generating electricity, procuring it, and putting it on the grid for it to be sent to, uh, through the delivery system to people's homes. There's no rental fee or anything like that. There won't be any other fee than what the power you're using, the service you're using. That, that's, yeah, I mean, the, exactly, yes. Okay. It's just the generation, the cost of generating that electricity that you're paying for. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Has anybody looked at Palo Alto's electrical program? Since 1960 and before, They've been independent of mm -hmm. PG&E. How can we get into a program like Palo Alto's got? So Palo Alto is a model. The, they are a municipally owned utility. That means that the, the, the local government owns not just the generation or is responsible just for the generation, but also owns the poles and the wires, right? So that is a full kind of municipal, municipaliza municipalization which uh, is not being contemplated under this model because to take over all of the all of the infrastructure would be, you know, way, way, way beyond the ability for a local government to, to, to buy that out. So that's why the focus here has been just on focusing on the deliver. I'm sorry, the generation of electricity and leaving the delivery to PG&E. Because in Palo Alto, in 1960, they were 30 percent cheaper than the nearest power company, including PG&E. So if they've got a proven system, 
why isn't our city looking at something that's proved? Uh, again, it's, it's, it's a major undertaking. Uh, the city of Boulder, for example, uh, actually the city of Davis in California, they were looking at possibly doing a full municipal mm -hmm. conversion. And again, it's, it's very difficult, very expensive, and a complicated process. Uh, now, it is true that Palo Alto and the city of Santa Clara and the city of Alameda, they have had municipal utilities for decades and decades. And it is true that in general, the rates have been lower. Quite. Um, yeah, quite a bit lower. <clears throat> um, but we, just given the, the process and the complicated procedure to go and, and the capital required to go actually do that, I don't think it's uh, an option, especially for an area as big as San Mateo County. Well, in Palo Alto, again, that's the only one I know about. Yep. Their electric bill went up $25 a month for four years to pay for the program. I mean, you know, something to think about. Yeah. And nobody is looking at success. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? If well, you can, if I can chop my payment in a, by a half and me pay, f say, $50 more a month for three or four years, that's a given. Right. Well, again, it's, it's a, yeah, it, it's a complicated, it's a kind of a long, a long process to, to do that. And, um, uh, Again, you know, we're talking about a county the size of San Mateo, which is vastly larger than the city of Palo Alto. So. Well, and, and actually, there was one example. The city of Hercules did a municipal utility, and it failed. And then everyone had to be returned back to PG&E. So a municipal utility, there's not necessarily a guarantee of success. No, but my point is, is it doesn't seem to me like anybody is looking at success. Well, if Alameda, if... Palo Alto, if these other cities or counties have a successful program, has anybody looked at what it would cost us for to put it up? Yeah, has anybody know. looked at us, us being independent, independent from PG&E? I don't know. Well, I think we've looked at the, the community choice programs and thought those were successful. So anyway, but I hear what you're saying. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I think you should seriously listen to these gentlemen because I was involved 15 years ago and I went to Sacramento and I dealt with all the power and the places that were successful was Palo Alto because they didn't have to worry about the grid. With PG&E, they were selling our, our energy to Arizona and we were buying it back and it was crazy. And I don't know if you've all forgotten that, but no, this, this is a choice we've got right now. But I think that you need to look at Palo Alto because that was the one that weren't involved at all. They had a, their own system and they didn't care what pg and &E did. And when the city was going and getting, um, was trying to get power, I'm pleased to know that they've succeeded at last because the biggest problem they had was pg and &E would take out big ads. I don't know if they're gonna do it for San Mateo County, but they would take out big ads and saying, don't go with this choice. And that's what a lot of people are gonna hear because they're gonna hear what is, they're told. Not what's true, but what they're told. Well, I, I, it's gonna be much harder for pg and &E to do that this time. But, anyway. Okay. I was on the other side, I had a question, but I'll wait there now. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I have uh, two questions. The first, uh, more, more pertinent, is um, I can understand there's no guarantee that the prices will Mm -hmm. you know, stay lower than pg and &E. but, but uh, the, the first question I have is, can you guarantee us that we will be allowed to switch back to pg and &E over a certain period of time, like, we, like maybe 10 years from now? Can I still uh, switch back from PGE? How about five years from now? Because I kind of wonder, okay, maybe after a year, after two years, mm -hmm. we have this option to switch back when we see their, late, their rates are actually lower than the clean energy <coughs> rates. Yeah. How, how many years can you guarantee us that we have that right to switch back? Uh, under state law, being an opt-out program, you can opt out at any time, whether it's tomorrow or 10 years from now. So there's okay. no time limit on that. All right, good. And the other question is, how easy will it be for us to access information that will that'll let us know how the clean energy rates are comparing to the, to the current PG&E rates? Will we be able to find that easily, or is that going to be something difficult for us to research? requirement for the CC program, community choice programs, is that you are uh, required to uh, once a year uh, issue what we call a power content label, which uh, looks at the resource mix, how much of it's renewable, not renewable, uh, as well as uh, the, the 
the price comparison uh, for your rate class. So there are lots and lots of rate classes, industrial, commercial, residential. Um, so you can always do kind of an apples to apples comparison. Uh, in fact, you can look on the pg e website right now and get that information as well as look at the, um, at the uh, other Marin and Sonoma website. So you, sh you should always be able to look at what the competition is potentially offering. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Sure. My first comment is I'm going to speak in favor of cautious optimism mm -hmm. around this program. Uh, I think that I'm adventurous enough to want to lower greenhouse gases and take the risk of not being with PG&E for a while and then going back if I don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, the question I have for you relates to the solar panels on your house. Mm -hmm. Is that another aspect that the board will decide once the thing happens, if the thing is to happen? Yes, yeah, so the net metering mm -hmm. rates are decided by the board of directors of the, of the CC Community Choice Program. And do you happen to have any information on what the relative rates are in the proven programs that yeah, already it's, um, Yeah, so I think Marin, I'm not sure about Sonoma, but Marin pays at least a penny more per kilowatt hour. Uh, and uh, at the end of the year, uh, if, you, um, if you're a net energy producer, then I think PG&E compensates you at the, the wholesale rate, which is like three to four cents per kilowatt hour. And Marin, they'll compensate you at the retail rate, which is a, a good bit higher. So it's, you know, it, it definitely is more generous. And my last question goes back to the comment before about the uh, brownouts and blackouts mm -hmm. a while ago. And my concern is about scaling, because if we do take a place as big as San Mateo County and bring them into this environment, is, what's the research and where can I look at the research that the energy exists to be bought to serve us? All right. So uh, initially, the, uh, the power would be procured on the wholesale market, and it's a very dynamic market with you know, thousands and thousands of generators, both renewable and non-renewable. Uh, and the technical study looked at this issue and said that um, uh, there should be more than enough supply out there, because again, you know, you're being supplied right now. Right. right. So there's. <laughs> but the, well, by by but what the, method? Right. right. Yeah. Um, but the, the concern has come about, well, if Peninsula Clean Energy is going to start, and the technical study looked at a scenario where you could start uh, day one with 50% renewable content. Again, PGE, you're now at 27%. <clears throat> and is the uh, renewable energy out there right. available? And the technical study said the answer to that is yes. Um, the, uh, there are thousands of megawatts of new renewables that are coming online, and the idea is that o over the next several years, once Peninsula Clean Energy starts operating and uh, getting some momentum and some revenues, that they could do develop its own resources or contract out with a third party to develop solar projects on behalf of Peninsula Clean Energy customers. Because so we would be customers, others might be more interested in generating that renewable right. energy because they would have and a the customer. And the idea is to stimulate the market, to accelerate the development, uh, and there's thousands of projects out there that are not being developed because the market for renewable energy just isn't there yet. Okay, thank you, sure. thank you very much. Hi, my question is about um, this vote that the city council is supposed to mm -hmm. uh, have in February, is that vote to give South San Francisco a choice on whether we choose this energy source or not? Or is their vote choosing for all of us to be a part of this and then we have to actively opt out? So the vote is if uh, city council votes to join Pensa Clean Energy, that means all of the customers, electricity customers in the city would automatically be enrolled in, into Peninsula Clean Energy unless they choose to opt out. So that's the vote that the city council has to make. Does that, that answer your question? So basically they're signing us up by saying yes. They are, and we have to actively what, what, opt out. What they're doing is they are changing the default electricity provider okay. from PG&E to Peninsula Clean Energy. And by doing that, they're giving you a choice that you don't currently have right now. That would be another way of looking at it. It would, <laughs> and I commend you on that upswing. My question then is, what is the opt-out method that us as South City residents would have to go through to opt out? 
Uh, you can do it online with a simple click. Uh, just go to their website. You can, um, call, you know, there's an 800 number you can call. Very, very straightforward. You know, just say I want to opt out and return to pg e service. They give them your address, your account number, and then that, that then you're then you're back at pg e One more question is how quickly after they make this vote will we know what their choice is? Because I think we're all really interested on yeah. if it's a yes or no. Right. Well, I was, if they vote, you know, whenever they vote, then it's the public record, and they made the decision, and then everyone would know. Okay. I sh I, I, I'm sorry, I want to add one thing, and that is that we also uh, meticulously negotiated in the agreement uh, that would govern the program that if by the time their program launches, uh, for some reason market conditions have changed and prices are higher or renewable energy, con the renewable energy is not available, that the, com the city can back out. So there's an off-ramp if for some reason in the next five or six months something really drastic changes. So the vote is to join Peace Peninsula Clean Energy, but they can back out if something really changes, big changes in the next few months. Make sure the only other that. thing is, uh, will the presentation be available online for us, for people who weren't able to make this meeting? I, uh, yeah. You can post it to the city website, sfdec.net. So yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. Welcome. I'm a resident of South San Francisco. I also have a house in Roner Park. Mm -hmm. I'm a participant of Sonoma Clean Energy. You want to talk to the microphone? Mm -hmm. You want to look at my bill? No, but they won't. Okay, can you talk to the microphone? Huh? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I have a house in Roner Park. Can you hear me? Oh, I'm too short. Vertically challenged. Uh, I have a house here in South San Francisco and one in Roner Park. I'm a customer of Sonoma Clean Energy, and I've been absolutely happy with it. Okay. Opting out is easy if you want to stay, whatever. There's been enormous outreach uh, to all the residents in my area. Uh, there's constantly um, advertising about if you need to have more questions or whatever. Uh, the people have been great. Um, my question here, after having listened to the gentleman mention Palo Alto, is is there? This is a good first step. I like this, and I'm very happy that um, it provides us an option, a little bit of savings, but mostly better treatment of our environment. Mm -hmm. Is my thought. If if it's feasible to look at and perhaps replicate Palo Alto, or for I guess long-term step, or possibly consider uh, counties banding together to request the state to do some sort of eminent domain steps to take over what's already here. pg e has already made buku money off this state mm -hmm. for all the infrastructure, infrastructure that they have. Um, what they're getting right now is you know, gravy. So I don't have a problem and I would ex uh, encourage feasibility studies of eminent domain actions to take over that infrastructure. And I personally would have no problem paying extra in my pg e bill to do so. So thank you very much. If anybody wants to look at my pg e bill, they're welcome to do so. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I, I, I support clean energy, don't get me wrong, but we've heard things on the positive side from Marin and Sonoma. Let me play devil's advocate. In doing some research, I came across this article and it says, little more than two years ago, Chicago became the largest city to ditch its traditional electric supplier and move to a CCA. When their contract expires next month, they're gonna go back, mm -hmm. okay? Um, City officials said the move reflects a marketplace reality. Since ComEd's rates drop, ComEd is same as their PG&E. In, in 2013, they have a much, they're much closer to the competition. They're close enough that, that they believe, and for their residents, that uh, it would, it's, not fees, it's not worth the additional time, expense, and potential risk of continuing with the alternative energy program. Roughly 750,000 households, or an estimated 2 million people, have participated in this program, according to the city, which estimates savings to several millions of dollars. 
Much of these savings, however, occurred in the beginning of the program when ComEd's rates were still high. As of last summer, about 60% of the residents were still seeing savings. However, many were paying more or under the same program than under the same program they would have had with ComEd. Chicago is just one of dozen municipal municipalities to move away from bulk electri electricity purchasing in recent years. As of last October, 102 communities out of 725 aggregation programs have not renewed their contracts, e effectively returning their residents to the legacy suppliers that they had before. Okay, so in reading this and doing, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Some more research. I have. Oh, do you want to respond to that? I have more questions. Uh, let me respond to that, and then. Yeah, what um, was the percentage? I think like 100 out of 700 went uh, back. Uh, 102 communities out of 725. So what's that percentage? Seven. Fourteen percent. Two percent. So uh, there are seven states in the country that have community choice. We call. Uh, community choice aggregation, or as they call it over, in the, over there in the Midwest, municipal aggregation laws. <laughs> um, Illinois is, is a really interesting example where hundreds and hundreds of small little towns, uh, and the law was, it's a little bit apples to oranges, but the law was structured very differently than in California, where basically a, a local government could just basically issue a contract for wholesale power. <clears throat> the motivation that all these communities did that uh, was to, um, was to get cheaper rates. And some of those cases, the rates were, were a lot cheaper because ComEd, which was the, the big utility there, had locked in uh, through you know, contracting rates and then gas prices collapsed and then municipal aggregators were able to come in and get much cheaper rates. So when those contracts at ComEd expired and they were able to get into the market and get the lower rates to benefit from the lower natural gas prices, um, the, the, the 20, 25 percent rate uh, savings sort of disappeared. So these, those programs were really more about just bulk purchasing of electricity and they weren't really focused on renewable energy or you know, developing more of a, a real community program here. So it's not surprising that if you're just chasing the, the cheapest rates, that when those cheap rates are not available as much anymore, that you're going to go back to uh, your other option, which in this case was ComEd. So it's a little hard to compare Illinois with what's going on in California, but that's just you know some context for uh, for what you're seeing. Over but there. I was told we will be chasing rates as well, mm -hmm. you know, with the alternative energy. So it's on the market, you know, it, it it's up and down, and this is what the t members of the 20 cities and the two county representatives will be doing. It's it's like a stock market. You're going to be chasing rates, and 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 if if you look at this, if you know. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be nice to it. You know? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so, so I mean, w we're going to be dependent on people who have no experience. I mean, I'm an elected. I don't have experience with mm -hmm. this, making this decision for this program. My other, my other question is, uh, one of my several other questions are, we know PG&E is regulated. Are these alternative energy sources that we would be looking at to purchase, are they regulated by anyone? Yeah, so uh, all load-serving entities, which includes utilities and uh, community choice programs, are regulated by the Public Utility Commission. They have to comply with the Renewable Portfolio Standard, for example, and what we call resource adequacy requirements to make sure they've contracted for enough power so that on the hottest July day, the power is there. <clears throat> the one area uh, that's notable where the uh, community choice programs are not regulated under PUC regulations and the pg and &E is, is the rate setting process. So the rate setting process <laughs> is, uh, for municipal utilities and for community choice programs, that's handled by the community, by the local governing board. And have, in your research or in the study, have, are these alternative energy source suppliers local to California or are they throughout the United States and it would be seeking whatever supplier the rates are cheapest or l less expensive? So, uh, if I understand your question, uh, all load serving entities, again, including community choice programs, they do contract uh, through energy service providers in the wholesale market, and those are large companies, small companies, uh, gen but they you know, go out and they procure electricity from the generation plants themselves. So uh, there are companies that are in California, but they might have a presence in other states as well. 
so we wouldn't necessarily see the tax advantage if, if we were to purchase from another, uh, from a company out who is domiciled in another state. Okay, thank you. Um, also, uh, we were told at our study session, which was cut short because of time, um, that, that th the staffing would be totally non-county staff. It would be totally a, whole, a brand new staff that's coming in. Mm -hmm. And that means a CEO director, it means engineers, it means consultants, it means finance people. Oh. What is the projected overhead and where would this money come from? What would be the projected yearly overhead? Uh, the tech study had, um, I want to say maybe it's in the low millions of dollars. <clears throat> um, again, that's for staffing, consultants, and that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> uh, Thank you. But um, again, you know, uh, that's, that's minuscule compared to the overhead costs you're paying now through the incumbent utility. I mean, I think that, again, the staffs, uh, the salaries, they're all going to be publicly announced and available. Uh, the administration costs are you know, a couple percentage points of the total um, uh, uh, total revenue and, and expenses of the, because the biggest source of revenue and expenses for the program is electricity purchasing. You know, percentage of that, like I want to say maybe three or four percent would be for administrative costs. Okay, and then in Chicago, it said that it turned out that there were two monthly flat fees, one from the electric company for delivery of services and one from the alternative supplier for electric supply services. And so this, to me, this becomes problematic in as much as if you're a low energy user, you are gonna get hit with an additional two flat fees, one from, you know, for instance, PG and one from the alternative supplier. Mm -hmm. Ergo, people, you know, we're told to conserve energy, clean or not, it raises your rents, your rates. Right. I, I am not aware that the CC programs have any such uh, flat rates. I know that, uh, again, Chicago and Illinois, it's a different state. It's a different community choice aggregation law. But it doesn't preclude PG&E or the alternative supplier if they so chose to. to well, if, if PG&E, for example, wanted to uh, levy an additional fee, they'd have to get that approved by the Public Utility Commission. But what about the alternative source? What about the altern alternative supplier if they're out of state? Well, so when we talk about the alternative supply, so there are a number of different supply, energy supply mm -hmm. options for the community choice program to get out, to go out and procure the electricity. <clears throat> and it would be a competitive solicitation, it would be an RFP would be issued, and the community choice program would go and get the best deal it can and, and, and under current market conditions. Also mentioned in, in, this, in this newspaper article was the fact that there were two, two fee structures. One for uh, multiple, multiple dwelling and single family. Would that be the case in here, in, in um, this one? I'm, not, from, I'm not, not familiar with that. I mean, there's a rate structure in California uh, you know, for PG&E. There's, there's residential, there's small commercial, big commercial, industrial. Okay. Uh, the rate structure is really more done like that. Okay. Keep going. I like what she has to say. I'm giving her the vote. I just want to hear. She, she, she waited in line. Thank you. Want to, I, I, one or two more? I don't know. I'll yield because I'm one of the no, ones that will be voting. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? We're very happy with what you said. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I think you you did miss one point when about the exit fee of PG&E. You'll want to explain that to the yes. people. Yes. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> uh, there is what we call. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the question was uh, about something called an exit fee. <clears throat> now uh, it, it takes a minute of explanation, but it, it's an important point. Uh, uh, PG&E went out on behalf of you all <laughs> and, and and other San Mateo uh, customers and bought power, procured power for you know, several years ago <coughs> that will, you know, to carry them in, into the future. Now, if you leave PG&E service, if, will you, if you are what we call departing load, you will pay an exit fee. <coughs> and that exit fee compensates PG&E for having to go sell that power back into the market that it bought on your behalf and potentially selling that power at a loss. So the, currently, the, the, there is, um, uh, I want to say it's a couple of cents a kilowatt hour fee that custo CCE customers will pay. 
Now, the rates that the CC, I'm sorry, CC Community Choice Energy, Community Choice Programs, have been um, uh, getting in the wholesale market have been lower even when that uh, PC, um, the uh, exit fee is, we call it the PCIA, but the exit fee is added on. And that exit fee will change from year to year. Uh, hopefully it will continue to go down and there's a lot of lobbying to uh, change the method by which that exit fee is calculated. But that is an additional fee that Community Choice customers pay. It is currently um, set at a rate where we project, even with that fee, the savings will be four or five percent. That uh, the slide we have before included that exit fee, but uh, and it is possible, hopefully, low likely that that fee will go down substantially over time as the contracts that PG&E has procured on on behalf of the departing load expire. So that is a very simple explanation. Happy to go into more detail. It's kind of complicated, but that's the basic gist. Great, thanks. The, the what, the, what follows on that, okay. <coughs> you lower it a little bit. <laughs> All right. What follows on that is that the costs are going to go down. So when we look at solar and wind over the last 10 years, they've gone down about 80%. Mm -hmm. And it, won't, it can't keep going down at that rate, but it can keep going down substantially. Mm -hmm. And when you put batteries in the mix, that also puts more value on it so you save money from the utility having to expand its substations and things. So, and that was figured out at three and a half cents a kilowatt hour by the National Renewable Energy Labs. So between the fact that solar and wind will keep getting lower and cheaper, and the fact that the CCE programs provide incentives to do energy efficiency, and to keep reducing the amount of electricity you need to use to stay comfortable, you wind up with a whole lot better, a whole lot less cost for the utility to get it and for you to get it from the utility via the CCE. So it's a win-win situation. Okay. Thank you. I have a few questions. First of all, on these panels, these solar panels, mm -hmm. where are they made? The company that's doing it is the labor union. Which union's doing it? That's a good. Are you talking about uh, solar panels develop, uh, solar projects develop as part of community choice energy projects? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I know that um, uh, Marin and Sonoma have varying levels of uh, union participation in their projects. I can't speak to each individual project, but they certainly do include union labor. Uh, in the development of their projects that they're, that they're developing. You don't know how much. It could be 1%, 2%. percent oh, it's more than 1%. I mean, oh, I think... Uh, don't yeah. you think if you come to a meeting like this, those facts should be important enough that you have an exact number? Okay? <laughs> I mean, I, oh, I, I, to South San Francisco, I imagine 75% of the people here right. are union. I, I know... One way or the other. I know that... And for, I'm just curious. Yeah, for Sonoma Clean Power... Uh, they have signed project labor agreements with I can't That's to, build. to build the solar projects that they're that Okay, building. now where are these solar projects going to be built for this county? For San Mateo County? Right. Well, that, that is to be determined. Okay. Um, you know, and then we have to purchase property, correct? Is that part of the bill too? Not necessarily. Well, then you have to lease property. Possibly. And you have to buy all the other stuff. Yep. Plus the wages for the people that sit on the panels, mm -hmm. commissioners. And what jobs are going to be created by this, besides the jobs of the panel? Right. So, well, the installation jobs, obviously. Okay. And who's going to be uh, doing that? Which unions are going to be doing that? Or exactly. Um, well, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, this, these projects haven't been developed yet. The tech study. There's been five guys that came to my house, knocking on my door about solar panels. Not one of them were a union. Well, not one of them were from San Francisco mm -hmm. or the Bay Area, and the product that they're bringing in is from Canada. Mm -hmm. And if you want to buy a product made in the United States, it's 50 percent more. Mm -hmm. So these are questions I'm. Here yeah. For. So I, I mean, the, the home installers, the guys, the solar cities that come out, uh, th those are not the companies necessarily that a community choice program, which would be building megawatt level size projects, not you know putting 20 panels on the top of a roof. 
um, that can be, that's a completely different level of uh, involvement. And as I said, for the other community choice programs, they do have project labor agreements in place. I can't say for in the case of Marin, for example, how many of megawatts of their megawatts are being built by union labor. But I do know because Marin's been criticized a lot by IBW that they are very focused on having as much union labor as possible. And I would assume that would be the case for Peninsula Clean Energy as well. Okay, now the problem with the, the birds and, and the windmills or the mm -hmm. burns with the solar panels that are creating all this power, this clean energy is killed an awful lot of animals. Mm -hmm. What about that? So uh, with regards to solar power, there are no birds being killed unless you're referring to the, uh, the kind of concentrated solar power ones where the birds fly in and they get fried, right? right. Yeah, Th that is, that's a solar thermal technology, not a sol solar voltaic. So you're not gonna it. use none so of I, that? I can't imagine, because those, those are huge projects. No, I'm just but saying, so you, but you're buying a product, right? Yeah. And you don't know where you're buying it from, you're just buying it from an energy grid that could come from there, mm -hmm. exactly? Uh, so it's coming from wherever it's cheapest. Well, so the, the... That's the question. Yeah, the Community Choice Program could put, uh, when they go out initially, when they buy the initial wholesale power, they could put whatever <coughs> requirements they want on... Where the, it comes from. Where it comes from. What types of uh, plants it comes from, what types of unions are employed at those plants, exactly. all that. Exactly. Yeah. So then the proper answer for the question was, you're not aware of what's going to happen. No. You just buy the product and you well, bring it here and we buy it from you. I, I am not, uh, I can't answer that question but because the program hasn't started yet. But when the but program does start. you're on behalf of the program being started, correct? Right. But when the program starts, yeah. that's when the, the requirements and all of the uh, conditions that be, the board wanted to put on it, that's, that's when that happens. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Hi. Um, so Palo Alto actually has uh, utility rate or electricity rates that are 25% lower than pg and &E, and we have 100% renewable, oh, sorry. So uh, City of Palo Alto has utility electricity rates that are 25% lower than pg and &E, and we have 100% renewable electricity. So, and one of the reasons that our prices are lower and our renewables are higher is because it's a public utility because we don't pay those really high salaries that pg and &E pays. So what Community Choice offers is the opportunity for your city to have a public program where you don't pay those high salaries and you get the benefit of the lower costs as a result and greener electricity. So that's all really good. Um, my question, actually, I now have two quick ones. Um, one of them was um, the question of, uh, of labor. It sounds to me like you can't answer the question because you can't negotiate the contracts until y'all sign on. So once you sign on, then you go through the process of negotiating the contracts. So at that point, if there was an interest in having labor be considered, that that would right. be an opportunity for people in the community to speak to that and that mm -hmm. the JPA would listen and consider that. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. All policy governance decisions are determined by the board of directors of the JPA, Joint Powers Agreement Board and that board will start meeting in March. So until that happens, I can't say for, for sure, you know, what, you know, where the panels will come from or even when the projects will start being built. But that body that's choosing to make those contracts could consider the issue of labor at that time, correct? I think they can consider any issue. <laughs> okay. okay. And also, um, my other question was, um, so it sounds to me like so the residents can opt out at any time and go back to pg &E. So if the prices were off and mm -hmm. PG&E was cheaper, anybody can go back to pg &E at any time. But isn't it also true that if it looks like over time the rates are just cheaper with pg &E, that y'all could just decide to fold it up and nobody would be worse the wear? That's possible, yeah. So the worst case scenario is if uh, enough customers switch back and the program decides to fold and unwind, and all the customers would be uh, switched back to pg and &E. That obviously hasn't happened yet, but uh, with any program, but that is, that's, that, that is the worst case possibility. Okay, so there's no huge risk and there's no public money being spent, right? There's, that's right. Okay, thank you. John again. Um, it seems like I'm hearing this, this issue of reliability cost and how easy you can opt out all these things, and there are things we need to consider. But um, I heard a, I would call it a not so nice rumor that PG&E sponsored some kind of a bill in the legislature to where they don't have to buy the excess power that is generated from your solar panels. 
and you may not get credit for it, that it just goes to the grid and they keep it. So there was a, um, it wasn't at the legislature, it was the Public Utility Commission. Okay, where, PUC. Yeah, the utilities were arguing for um, uh, adding additional fees and charges and paying less for the excess generation that comes from uh, excess production of, of distributed generation. Uh, and uh, that was defeated. For the most part, that was defeated. There were a couple, they got a couple of little things in there, but basically uh, the, the overall net energy metering structure has been maintained. So in other words, if a homeowner decides to put solar panels and they generate more than what you use, mm -hmm. you can be compensated for that excess power that you're returning to the grid. Yes. And PG&E didn't get what they wanted. Did not get what they wanted. See, that's the most an part, example yeah. of what I'm saying. This is the type of company we're dealing with. <coughs> Thank you. Sure. Okay, I have a list of a few questions and I will hope you bear with me. First of all is, would there be an opt-out fee associated with this switch? So, um, and how much? Yeah, so let uh, me be clear about that. So um, uh, Marin, I'm not sure about Sonoma, but Marin Clean Energy charges a $5 fee for a homeowner to opt out after that initial enrollment period. Uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it would be up to the Peninsula Clean Energy Board to decide if there's a fee or not. But in any case, uh, they can opt out and, and it, it will just depend on what the board, the JPA board decides once they set the rates. So you mean that after the probationary period, mm -hmm. there'll be a fee and you don't know how much that fee I might don't, be. I don't know how much that fee will be. Um, I, you know, that again, that will be decided, or if there will be any fee. And maybe this, maybe the Peninsula Clean Energy decides they won't, don't want to charge any fee for anyone to opt out. I can tell you Marine Clean Energy has chosen to, to levy a $5 fee. Every once? No, one time. <clears throat> okay, I'm thinking something similar to what PG&E did was when they took out our analog meters and put those digital meters in there and then they said you could opt out also. And then they started associating a fee with that, plus a higher rate for people who decided to uh, keep those analog meters because they didn't trust the digital meters, right. and they got nailed for that too. Mm -hmm. So are we going to be in that kind of predicament again? Um, again, the Community Choice Program does not handle anything related to delivery, and that includes the meters. That's not a part of part of the CC, the community choice program. Well, you are kind of pushing us all into that program and you are not prepared to answer our questions saying that what kind of fees can we incur mm -hmm. because of your actions, not of our actions. Right. Well, I mean, again, I think that if you mind the JPA board, uh, they're elected officials, the meetings are all open to the public. So whatever <laughs> rate structure is decided upon, whether, when, whether it's the rates or the fees or whatever, that is all decided uh, in, a, in a public forum and, and citizens are, unlike PG&E, able to comment uh, at, at any time. And of course, during this initial opt-out period, you can opt out for, for free and it may stay that way. We don't know. But the decisions that will answer that question, you're gonna be able to participate in because it's an open democratic process. And what are your interests in this program? Rather than trying to sell, sell us um, let's say, a program that you say will save us energy costs. What are your interests in this program? So my interest personally? Not your personal, but your community program interest. I'm, talking, I'm not talking about you alone. I'm <laughs> talking about your program. <clears throat> the interests, again, this is handled uh, being led by the Office of Sustainability, which has certain goals, environmental goals, climate action goals, and they feel that this is in the interests of their program and of the you know, broader county of San Mateo. And that's really, I mean, I'll, I'll let, maybe I'll let Jim speak to that, but that's, that. The, I, I'm just a rep, I'm a consultant for the county representing them, uh, but I think I'm adequately describing their interests. There's, well, not, there's no financial interest. The county's not gonna make any money off this. Well, you know, because you're forcing us into a program, we are no say so in joining. Mm -hmm. but we can opt out down the line. Yes. A lot of people probably will forget to j opt out mm -hmm. in time and they'll get nailed for a fee and don't even know what that fee will be. 
Uh, yeah, again, that that's is, an unfair. It is. Uh, it is possible that that uh, would happen. Now, I should say one mitigating factor there to consider is that the county will be undertaking a pretty rigorous. And we talk about these opt-out notices, but there's going to be a broader, much broader communications and outreach strategy that will go across the county so that people really understand what's happening. Um, it is possible that if people miss out and that after the initial rolling period, and if the Peninsula Clean Energy Board decides to, that there's a, a small fee, and I'm sure it would be very small, uh, that someone would end up paying that fee if they chose to go back to pg and &E. I hope it's not like Red Riding Hood and the Wolf. Anyways. Uh, why can't uh, oh, PG&E compete with these things on on the same level as the community progr choice programs? Would you say you'd be buying energy, clean energy, on the open market? Mm -hmm. You don't have a facility that generates that power at this time. Not at this time. No. Right. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you might mm -hmm. do that if it proves profitable, right? So, right, yeah. Okay. Right now, so why how can you guys compete with a, a, a giant over here, which is called PG&E, mm -hmm. with a small totem pole over here <laughs> trying to compete with that? How do you do that? So um, both PG&E and a community choice program transact in the same market. They, they go get electricity from the same big pool that is the California grid. <clears throat> uh, the, the prices for that grid power are set and Everyone knows what they are. <clears throat> and so uh, the Community Choice Program signs the same type of power contracts that PG&E signs. PG&E also has its own generation facilities. That's true. Mm -hmm. But it also buys a lot of power from independent power producers, which is what a Community Choice Program will do. Once a Community Choice Program gets off the ground, as we're seeing in the case of Marin, they have 200 megawatts of new projects going in it's directly you know, for MCE customers. That's the kind of, you know, uh, uh, that's how Peninsula Clean Energy will create a, a program. And ultimately, I think, be competitive in part because it's a nonprofit agency as opposed to a for-profit corporation. So there's, there's some advantages there as well. Well, it's like me trying to go buy a government contract as an individual, and I don't have unlimited funds like the government has. So you're trying to tell me PG&E has less of a power to buy the same negotiating power to buy the same energy that you can compete as a little I mean, guy? You have the same negotiating power. You have the same negotiating oh, power. I mean, again, if there's, you know, 200 megawatts of, let's say, solar power out there, a C community choice program can bid on it, PG&E can bid on it. In addition, PG&E can issue an RFP to develop new renewable resources. They do that. The community choice program could go out and say, we want to build 100 megawatts, 200 megawatts. And the pricing will be the same because, you know, to build a new megawatt of solar is X dollars per megawatt. Okay, let me ask you a touchy question now. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 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 no, I, 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 I enjoy this. this. Um, retaliatory actions. Retaliatory actions. Retaliatory actions. Reta mm -hmm. My English is not that <laughs> great. Okay. Um, now, what prevents PG&E from retaliating against their customers that switched involuntarily to this program when they go back? So I have heard of no retaliatory actions, and I can assure you that if PG&E tried to do some regulatory actions, and if that were known and made not, uh, known to the authorities, that, that would, there would be some pretty severe consequences. So I don't think PG&E would, would do that. They can't do it. I mean, under law, under state law, they are required to deliver electricity regardless of who the supplier is. Okay. Now, there are, uh, just as another example, there's, there's been what we call direct access. So big energy consumers have been able to go to the wholesale market for years. All right, they've switched from PG&E and they go to a, another wholesale supplier. PG&E has never retaliated against any of them. Well, they tried when the when the people that generate energy individually, like homes, on net meters, or uh, and solar farms that generate power, they try to go through the uh, to the PG, uh, P CPUC mm -hmm. to penalize those people. 
It's penalty, basically. So, That's what it's well, called, yeah, right? I mean, it depends okay. how you define retaliatory. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, are you guys on an empire building uh, scheme or something like that? <laughs> Um, I don't build empires. Uh, no, man, I'm, I'm too, talking about your company. Too, too much of a, uh, pretty much just, just me and my company. Uh, empire building. So, again, the, the territorial <laughs> confines of this uh, Peninsula Clean Energy is San Mateo County. They're, San Mateo County is the, the only towns that are being, cities that are being considered to be part of this program are within the county jurisdiction. You keep saying, that's very interesting, you keep saying San Mateo County. Mm -hmm. San Mateo County is a huge county. Yes. Right? It owns a lot of land. Guess where those power towers are set up on? San Mateo County's land. San Mateo County charges PG&E a fee to have those towers there and the substations that are there. I think San Mateo County has a lot more uh, ability in kind words to negotiate that system just like Palo Alto did. I, I, yeah, I don't think that's the case. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you look at it, I'm, I'm not going to argue. I'm just saying. Yeah. That's okay. just, okay. Last question, I'm, then I'm done. Um, what's PG&E's take on this issue? Because you said we discussed it with PG&E, &E, but you didn't say what was their take or their opinion or their reaction on this issue? So, so PG&E, again, if you want to set up a community choice program, PG&E has to go through the process to uh, negotiate a service agreement with the community choice program. They have to do that. Uh, PG&E is a partner, whether they like it or not. I don't know what they say privately in their own offices, but you know, I, I, I've spoken to PG&E on, on low data requests and other things. They're, they're very friendly. They, they give us what they need to give us. As I said, in, back in 2010 and 2009, when they were lobbying against uh, Marin Clean Energy, uh, that stopped. So, I, you know, what's, what's PG&E's take? Uh, you know, publicly now, uh, we work cooperatively with them. What they're doing behind the scenes, I can't comment on. Last thing. Really? <laughs> if I may. Well, these are questions that I'm sure a lot of people have too. I'm not the only one asking these questions. So, anyways, okay. You can call. You can find me after. There will be another opportunity, and I'll not send an email to you. Okay. You offered to see you after too. No, I don't want to. <laughs> Earlier this evening, a gentleman over there pointed out that 15 years ago, a program very similar to this bombed right here in this city, bombed. People got hurt. Don't ask me who, how much, and all that. I don't know. They don't know. So don't ask them either. Okay? If you in, can you guarantee me and that person and that person and all these people here that every one of them will have lower bills? Can you I, guarantee that, and for how long? I, I, I cannot can't. guarantee. You can't. Okay. Cannot guarantee that. Understand Forever, that? you will have lower No guarantees. Beginning. Now, yes, you can opt out. Can, can you get them guaranteed? You said you were going to save money. Can you guarantee it? How? How are you going to explain to people you saved the money? Are you capable of uh, analyzing a pg and &E bill? Have you ever done that? Do you know how many tiers you're on? Do you know how many different peop business people, non-business people, people with prop, prop disability problems and so forth? It's very complicated. You want to read their information sheet. I went to the computer. It's 46 pages of the smallest print you can find. <laughs> and I guarantee you after five lines, you won't understand the first one. <laughs> okay? Now, I'm not. Uh, that's not to say that they're, you know, trying to... Pff, you know, give you a bunch of baloney, it's saying that it's difficult to understand, okay? Now, if they can give you a guarantee, we're all set. And if somebody, you know, like if he says, I'm going to save $5 a month because he's looked at my bill and he knows I can save $5 a month going in his direction, and if I only save four ninety five, he's going to give me another nickel, okay? What's the problem? Guarantee it. So it is, okay. uh, if I can What's comment, it is, um, 
Electricity bills are maddeningly complex. Yes, they are. I, I'm in this business and I still have trouble reading my bill. <coughs> they are. <laughs> the idea behind the community, one of the ideas is that you can do, take out all the charges, the public benefits charge and the taxes and all that. You're looking at the generation rate. On, mm -hmm. on the pg and &E website, on the Community Choice Energy websites, mm -hmm. you've got, you can look at your rate. You are a resident. Your rate is called E1, if you're interested. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you can say, okay, well, you know, the summer rate for marine clean energy is, you know, 8.9 cents per kilowatt hour, and pg and &E is 8.7 or 9.1. Mm -hmm. That's how you can readily mm -hmm. compare. Mm -hmm. It's hard to translate into savings, and the but community choice is, programs would, yeah. would be part of their responsibility to communicate what that might be on a typical homeowner's bill. Mm -hmm. But it will be possible to see what your generation rate is for your rate class, and what if you're a community choice customer, and what PG&E's similar rate structure mm -hmm. class level but, is. Uh, yeah. You will be able to do that. Remember that. You can do that. However, you can do that today, but not next. We're going to do it next month the month after that, the month after that. PG&E buys electricity in huge amounts. They are a, an important negotiator in the market, okay? They buy for five years, 10 years, 20 years out. That's why your, your, your supply is um, reliable in spite of what some people think here because of a power outage. You know, there's other people in this country that have power outages besides PG&E. <coughs> so it's reliable. Now, why is it reliable? Because they've already made those contracts. They've got the stuff coming. Today, he can buy it at a certain price. Next month, he may not be able to buy it at that price. Those people back in 15 years ago were buying when, it, on the current market rate, it was cheap as opposed to PG&E because PG&E had made the long-term contracts that were higher. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Think about it. You know, it's a guarantee. Now, I, I, I don't know how he's going to formulate that, but I want a guarantee if I'm going to do that. Why should I even opt out? Why should I ask you to opt out? Because I want to opt out. Huh? Individual choice. Thank you. That's not an individual choice. Jackie Jacobberger, um, and I'm a f over 50 year resident of South San Francisco and also over 50 years in the League of Women Voters. <laughs> and and, and uh, I thank you for coming tonight and, and your patience in answering these questions. Uh, the League has had several meetings uh, to look at this issue, and um, you know, we're, we're all kind of fixated on our five dollars that we might save or not save that's going to cost us but i think what we're interested in the we we've, we've looked at climate change and we've worked on it for a long time and we look at um this is an effective way to cut carbon emissions and to help with the climate change if it costs me five dollars more i don't care mm -hmm. but what i understand <laughs> because i'm concerned I'm concerned about the health of my children, and my, which are all grown up, but the grandchildren and now the great-grandchild, because I want them to have a better future. And I understand that 12 cities in the county have already signed on to this uh, before our letters even got out from the League of Women Voters <laughs> to, to support it. Um, what I would say, we're so concerned about our control, but this would set up a joint powers authority which gives us as citizens the opportunity to comment, and we know what's, what's happened with the PUC, that we've had not had the same um, transparency and the ability to, to address it. Um, so I'm happy to have a, a place where I can go and speak if I feel like you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think it's worth a try. I went through that fiasco. <laughs> whenever that, that we referred to a long time ago and, and lost money. And I think it was Enron or somebody had something to do with it. Uh, yeah. But I also would say, you know, we, we're talking about PG and &E. Oh, we're worried about the salaries or whatever the, the JPA, the agency that's set up has. We forget that PG and E has great big salaries and I'm actually a stockholder in PG and E and I get, you know, the dividends, so it's costing PG&E money also. 
and I, I can't believe that this, uh, this authority that would be set up could cost us any more money. Hi, Hi, Lynn Lair. My husband and I have only been here for three years, but we've been PG&E customers for 51 years. We've had no problem with them. That's not what I'm here about. I have three questions. I don't want a long dissertation like you've been giving. I want a yes or a no, okay? On the generated rates that you get, if those go down, will our bill go down? Yes or no? If your generation rate is lower than PG&E's generation rate, you will have a savings. If the next year it goes even lower, will it go down again? It should. Okay. Um, will PG&E be charging us any more for the transmission and repair? No. And on, I think you answered this, but I'm not sure if I heard it correctly. On the opt-out fee, is that a one-time fee or an every-month fee? One time. Thank you. Hello. Um, if you're not Empire Building with this company, are you writing a fantasy novel to try and Empire Build there, like Game of Thrones or something like that? Anyway, sorry. Um, thought I'd give it a shot. Um, Got to work on that. Got to work on the routine there. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I appreciate the, the leaders of San Mateo County bringing this to us. I really do. It's very important because I'm scared. I'm scared of our future, and not for me so much because I'm already working on bucket list stuff, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm worried about my uh, my kids, my grandkids, and 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 so on. Uh, it's really important. Um, and there's a really. I know you know this is an important. Everyone knows this. We have to reduce CO2 somehow. We gotta do it. It's starting to kill our oceans now. Have you heard about carbonic acid? That's uh, a low level acid going into the oceans and it's starting to kill coral reefs and uh, shell creatures. Not a good out outlook unless we start to lower our carbon footprint. That being said, I, I, I don't want a bad deal either. And. Um, this sounds like I will opt in myself, uh, so I'm all for this. Um, but I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, PG&E has, it says, 27% uh, uh, renewal. Yeah, renewable energy content. Right. Now, what will the new, uh, this, uh, this do, the new program do? <clears throat> so that, uh, the, the exact energy content, the renewable energy content on day one when it launches, that will be decided by the board of the Joint Powers Authority. My guess is that it will be somewhere in the 50% range um, because that was the scenario two in the tech study. But that will, that's a decision that will be made in the March-April timeframe once the JPA board is seated. Um, yeah, I, I just want to encourage um, the city council uh, to vote uh, positively on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I wanted to be clear, because like you said, there's uh, there's Marin that's had this program mm -hmm. for how long? Five, six years. And, and Sonoma for how long? Going on two years. So when those, si when those programs started, um, or, or, or even now after they've been going for a long, what, what's the number of people who have gone back to PG&E who's, who've been dissatisfied or who, who didn't want to take part? So the opt-out rate yeah. for uh, marine clean energy is about 20%, and for Sonoma Clean Power, it's about 10%, which means that you know, those are the, that's the percentage of customers that opted out and went back to PG&E. And do they know why those people opted out? I don't know if any polls been taken, but you know you can see here there's a diversity of opinions. So I'm sure that people will ha have those opinions. They're every, they're in every community. Okay. So there are people who just want to stay with uh, with the utility. And and when you say like the the board of Peninsula Clean Energy or or the board of this program, so who's on that board? So every city who joins will have an elected official who will have a seat at the table. The county will have two seats. 
<clears throat> and they, are, they will make up the board of directors of the Joint Powers Authority, Peninsula Clean Energy, and they will make all of the governance decisions related to the Community Choice Program. An elected official from each jurisdiction in open and public meetings. So if, if South San Francisco joined, mm -hmm. they would have one of their they city would, council members would be a participant in that group. It would be a member, it would be someone the city council would appoint. Okay. And then that group is going to decide the things like the mm -hmm. rates and what percentage renewable yep. Yep. and um, and whether people would have to pay any fee if they opted out right. and those kinds of things. So if, if we're, if we're, we can always talk to our representative who's That's on correct. the board. Yes. And, and make our opinions known. Yes. And okay. certainly uh, participate in, in the board meetings. Okay. Um, well, I also kind of echo the comments of the woman from the League of Women's Voters. I think that there's, you know, there's, um, there's ways to get out of this if I, if I as an individual don't want to participate, mm -hmm. but I, I like having that choice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a particularly a fan of PG&E's methods as we've seen and the way they responded to San Bruno. But, um, and I, do, I really think we're at a critical point in time now where we do need to lower our carbon footprint. Are there, there won't be much of a pleasant future for our kids and our grandkids. So um, as, as the woman next to me said, there's nothing wrong with choice. Thanks. I'm a resident of uh, South San Francisco for many years and I love San, South San Francisco and I'm glad to make my home here. But there are a few questions I have to you to answer. You're the presenter. Who do you represent? I am a consultant, and I have been hired by the County of San Mateo, specifically the Office of Sustainability, to help them develop this program. And also, uh, you know, this Peninsula Clear Air per people, they're not in there for their health, I'm sure. And so how can you actually tell me that our rates are going to be lower? I mean, the lady here from Sonoma, the first lady that spoke, clearly stated she has relatives in Sonoma. The bill went up. So <laughs> I just don't see how our rates will stay lower. I just can't understand that. Furthermore, um, um, I really feel that we're forced into something that a lot of us don't want to participate in. But you said we can opt out at any time. But why put us in a position that we have to opt out and pay an exit fee of $5? I mean, I think we should have a choice. This is a democratic country. Mm -hmm. And I also feel that it's not only the council that can make the decision. I think it should be a public vote. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, this reminds me of the red light cameras in South San Francisco. We had meetings, meetings, meetings. People voiced their opinion. Most of them were negative. But the council went ahead and voted for it. Guess what? They found out that they weren't making any money. The people that were operating this thing made the money. So now there's no more red light cameras. But they didn't listen to us. People were voicing their opinion negatively. And I hope tonight, if they vote, I think it should be a public vote instead of just the council voting on it. Well, the council's not voting tonight. No, I know, but you yeah. said the end of February. Yeah. And lots of the questions that people asked, you were pretty evasive about it. Nothing positive. So, you know, what's the sense of having these meetings if you can't give us anything positive feedback? Oh, it hasn't been decided yet. Well, I hear you. Let me just say that uh, this whole, as get, we get this question a lot about opt-out. Why is it an opt-out program? That is the way the community choice aggregation law was crafted at the state legislature, and that's, that's the way these programs work. <clears throat> the, uh, again, what happens with an opt-out program is the default, you've got you know, one electricity provider now. With a community choice program, you have two. The default electricity provider switches from PG&E to the Community Choice Program. 
In terms of the, the $5 fee, again, it may be $5, it may be $1, maybe zero. And I, yeah, I just can't speak for this, uh, the JPA board, which hasn't made these decisions yet. So that, I mean, I'm not being evasive. I'm just, yeah. it's just sort of, uh, I can't answer the questions for decisions that haven't been made yet. So in San Mateo County, will each city, the, the council vote on it? Or what's the, how yeah, is it Yeah, the city councils have voted in the other 12 cities. So what if the South San Francisco vetoes it and says no, What's going to happen? Uh, the program will launch without South San Francisco, and then South San Francisco might have an option to join at a later time. Okay, thank you. Sure. I, I wanted to make a point that um, there will be no loss of jobs, and there will be an increase in jobs most likely. So there won't be a loss of jobs because PG&E will keep delivering, they'll keep providing the lineman services, the installation services, the billing services, all that stuff keeps going. And um, the reason that there is likely to be more jobs is that the community, community choice energy groups like in Sonoma and Wren are encouraging people to put their own solar pan to have solar panels on the roof to include, they can encourage them to do energy efficiency programs. Um, and where there's wind, you know, they can get harvest that. Where there's a big open space of land, they could do projects to build solar panels. And so it is a net win at every level. Hi, I'm Gerald Riotica. I'm a longtime resident of South San Francisco, close to 30 years. And I've actually built solar systems here in South San Francisco including uh, Pradeep Gupta, I built his system. And one thing I want to mention, I actually have a few things to mention and I'll get to a question for you in a yeah, bit. Sure. Um, climate change, w many of us are concerned about climate change we, and we need to think of what caused climate change? Who, who are the big industries that have burned fossil fuels? It's the big oil, uh, ga natural gas, coal companies that uh, utilities are obviously uh, having these resources extracted burning it, and then we're, what are we doing? We're moving electrons from these centralized power plants to our homes. And really, instead of burning fossil fuels, we could instead be installing more solar, having local jobs, and these local installers, some of them be your neighbors, including myself, that are gonna go and bring clean energy to our homes. So moving electrons from somewhere, really, like r right above your roof, or right on your roof, to your to the different loads in your house, appliances, your TV set, whatnot, and we need to think, uh, really question what has PG&E guaranteed us? Uh, I have a friend who lives in San Bruno, pretty close to his house. Um, his neighbors, some of them died. S uh, some of their homes are now just being rebuilt. So we need to think through what is uh, uh, what is the best way forward. Is it continuing burning more fossil fuel, or is it clean energy, solar, wind, other renewable energy sources? That really the market is growing so fast because the cost of solar is diminishing so quickly, and um, more and more solar is being installed at a quicker pace. So let's move forward and think about the future. Think about your children. I saw some two grandmothers exchanging photos earlier, and these photos are of, you know, three, four, five months, I'm not sure, maybe a year old babies. We have to think about those folks that we're passing on this world to them. Uh, if health is wealth, let's build a, a wealthier planet for the future, and that means more solar, more wind. And my question to you is, how can I help? I, I'm a technical trainer with one of the large solar companies in the, in the nation, and I want to be uh, a resource, and I want to help other folks uh, join the solar movement. I, I do my question was to him, and it was, how can I help? Because I think there are a lot of people, uh, especially my age, who are figuring out that the world, um, whether it be ocean acidification, deforestation, mass extinction, um, mountaintop removal, coal, um, you know, coral reef bleaching, all of these things are affecting us, and they're gonna affect our children, our children's children, or their children. So how can we further educate people and get involved? I mean, I think you're, you're doing it right now. I mean, come to events like this, come to the JPA board meetings, uh, follow the Peninsula Clean Energy website for there's you know, a lot of community events going on and stuff. So that, yeah, I mean, exactly what you're doing right now. 
in terms of uh, outreach to more young, like, I understand the demographic in this room um, is a little older, and um, I want this, this, there's obviously a wealth of knowledge in this room, and I think more and more people can share that, and I think there be, should be more community forums where we can talk, maybe share a meal, and actually um, spread this, this knowledge. Uh, and you are doing that, so thank you for being here. Thank you for your input. Hi, my name is Michael Klufkorn. Um, we're all ratepayers, and part of our money goes to funding programs for energy efficiency through the utilities. So there's programs like Bayran, there's a MASH program, there's solar programs. So both for remodels and for new construction, are those affected at all? No, you're still able to participate in PG&E uh, programs, implemented, administered programs, yes. For energy that, efficiency and, yeah. and PV rebates and so forth. Yep. Okay, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi. My name is Deanna Knellos. I've been a resident of South City for 45 years, so I'm kind of still new to some people. <laughs> but I have um, a question. I switched to Zoom Energy about four years ago off of PG&E's gas line. I called PG&E and I asked them, what were you charging me for therm? And they said, oh, you're a senior citizen, you're disabled, we got a special deal, mm -hmm. $1.79, nine a therm. Mm. Killed me. I called Zoom Energy, how much is it? She said, 59 cents a therm, and it never moves through the year. It never goes up, mm -hmm. it never goes down. After I signed up, PG&E messed with me, okay? And Zoom Energy, God love them, were checking mm -hmm. what they were charging. They notified PG&E that they were overcharging me, that they had me in the wrong level. PG&E had to call me and issue me a refund. Hot damn. And I didn't even ask for it. And then Zoom Energy followed up with me to make sure I got that refund. Mm -hmm. Will there be follow-up on our rates? with you guys, that PG&E isn't going to put us in another level and skim us some more. Right. Um, I'm so sorry. I, no, no, no I, I think what you're describing there, again, you know, that's the, the benefits of competition, right? This is what this is all about, competition. So um, in this case, the, again, the Community Choice Program only deals with the generation rates. Now, PG&E, their, their rates are regulated by the Public Utility Commission. So if they are doing things like this, they, you know, it has to be approved by the PUC. Now, will the, um, if they do, I mean, I, I can't speak for PG&E and if they would ever, you know, do these kinds of shenanigans or if, if what they were doing was um, a mistake or, or what exactly. <laughs> um, so I, um, I think that Again, the Community Choice Program will focus just on the generation and supply of electricity. And if we hear, or we, if the Community Choice staff hears of things like this that are going on, I am sure they will take action. Okay. But I, I can't say any more but, beyond that because I'm not sure what the scenarios might be. But there's not going to be a check, check on PG&E to make sure that they're not going to overcharge. Raise, overcharge. overcharge. I, I, and, I think and that there is a, in a different level. Are they in control? They're, of they're, the well, there's a big watchdog community out there. A big watchdog community out there that keeps, it's a community choice movement, it's a lot of other advocates that are out there that, that keep eye on, um, on what PG&E is doing. So I, I can't really comment more beyond that, except to say that I think it's hard for them, and, th and they didn't get away with it in this case. No, um, thank But you. it's hard for them to, to do get away with it because. They got away with it with, for two months, and then Zoom Energy came well, in. And yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure someone reported it to Zoom, and if it's something is like this is happening, well, someone will report it to Peninsula Clean Energy, and, you know, it'll. That's how you get uh, things changed, is okay. you let people know. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was a little surprised that PG&D is not here. Did you invite them to this, or? Uh, I, that might be a question for the city or for Office of, Office of Sustainab Sustainability. I, I don't know. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I think that they're, I mean, that they're not here speaks, it speaks poorly of them. Mm -hmm. If they were invited, mm -hmm. is all I'm saying. Um, and I've I've heard people uh, ask for you know guarantees from this program. What kind of guarantees are you getting from PG&E? 
Higher prices, right? We all know that. More explosions, maybe? Um, I'm, yeah. Uh, there is just one tiny point that no one has raised. Once you opt out of this and go back to pg e can you go out back in, or are they like, no, we got you back? That you're um, my understanding is that pg e you have to stay with pg e for one year before you can opt back into the uh, community choice program. Okay. And um, I, I do, um, I do want to, to express that to the mayor and to the rest of the council that I am very much in favor of going to a public solution. In Canada, uh, all electricity is public and they pay one tenth, I say one tenth of what we're paying here. So I think it's a very good thing. Quite apart from, um, I, I, would, I will go for the 100% renew, renewable as soon as that's available. So. Um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for coming. And uh, Mayor, I'm glad this is like our city, our uh, school board meetings. And you're all welcome to our school board meetings, by the way. It's <laughs> next week, February 11th. A um, couple questions that weren't answered. And I need to ask one for a lady that had to leave earlier. But, and I'm pretty no sure I know what the answer is. You guys are not going to be involved in the gas transmission. That's no. correct. Okay. It's only electricity. Only electricity. So I, good. It's on TV. She can say I check. Second question is we didn't talk about if any of the studies talked of how many jobs this can potentially create. Mm -hmm. So the technical study, uh, which is available on the Peninsula Clean Energy website, did have a section for the potential number of jobs that could be created. And I don't have those numbers uh, off, I don't have them memorized, but they're, you know, depending on the number of megawatts that are built locally, uh, it's it's pretty substantial. Okay, and the key thing I think for anybody to hear about is the opt-out option, the choice. Yes. Um, I mean, I think that's an amazing part of this whole program. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to start by saying that um, I really like the C uh, the CTE program, not necessarily or only because it's um, about renewable energy, but that it gives you a choice, mm -hmm. and I like to have a choice. But giving people the choice means also that you are going to compete against P, uh, PG&E mm -hmm. and mostly about the price. I, I heard a lot of people <coughs> saying that they're willing to pay $5 more or so per month for renewables, and I believe that, but for most people it will be about the price. Yes. So if PG&E drops the price, mm -hmm. then, and you can't compete with them, at and people start dropping out. You mentioned two numbers. I think in Sonoma you said 20% and in the other county like 10% mm -hmm. dropout rate by now. At what percentage people opting out of the program, does the program not work anymore? <clears throat> it's a good question. Um, and, and it's because the, uh, the opt-out rates have been fairly low for the other communities, we haven't really tested that. Um, but uh, if the, um, uh, Again, if, if, if the CC, if the Community Choice Program has contracted for power yeah. and people start dropping out, the CC would then have to sell that power back into the wholesale market. And so depending on the market conditions, maybe it makes a profit, maybe it makes a loss. So it's very hard to answer that question. Um, I think that overall the Community Choice Program has to be very cautious in terms of its um, – and this is where having a professional staff really comes in in terms of the amount of power it procures on a uh, – um, on a long-term basis versus a short-term basis. You know, there's always a mix of those kinds of contracts. So if it's short-term, the risks are less that people drop out. Um, so then it really becomes a question of what size of the program is required to make it viable. And I can tell you that, again, I'm assuming that, you know, uh, if there's a high uh, opt-out rate and short-term contracts can be expired or, or long-term contracts unwound in some way, that communities have launched community choice programs with, 6,000 customers, I mean much, much smaller. So the, the level of overall viability is much, much lower than what we're considering here in San Mateo County, which would be the largest, if all 20 cities joined, the largest community choice program in the state. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Uh, the second question is, um, so it says here that um, all CTEs are actually completely rate payer funded. Nothing comes out of the um, taxpayer money. Mm -hmm. But it also says that, for example, in San Mateo County, the county will provide the majority of the sort of funding. Yeah, so I if something goes wrong or too many people opt out, the county and the taxpayer will pay for it. Right? So, no, no. So I, sh I should have uh, noted this. So, 
uh, it's completely ratepayer supported once the program is up and running. The county has been put up has put up the money to kind of launch the program, and that was the case with Marin and Sonoma. And in both of those cases, uh, the the taxpayer funds were essentially reimbursed to the county yep. once the program was generating revenues. So yeah, so so the county that that part of it will uh, you know will be the taxpayer portion of that initial startup will be paid back to the county and will then be completely ratepayer supported. Okay, and my last question uh, um, is. Uh, my last question uh, is just about these um, initial startup. Um, how long will this going to take? Well, so we've been working on this for about a year now, uh, and we expect the first electrons to be delivered by October. So let's call it 18 months or so uh, okay. from, from start to launch. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mina Richardson, long-term resident here. I see the numbers here, it's 5% according to the chart. I wish that you had presented a typical bill and that way we could relate to that in that regard. Um, we wanna see the fees, a list of the fees. I don't see that, I just see a 5%. Um, my question is what is the, um, the gains for the industrialized, the businesses? Um, we just got a raise from PG&E, 8%. Now, down the road, we're gonna have a 5% or half a cent increase and for sales tax here in our city. Um, is that the same sales tax that will be part of the fee structure uh, for the rate payers? And um, I'll take that answer. No, no, the sales tax, like a city sales tax you're talking about? Yes, yeah, it went would, up that, to. That would, not, that would not apply on, a, on an electricity half bill. Half cent. Yeah, that would, not, that would not be applied to an electricity bill. That would not be part of, okay. And uh, what would be the gains for the, uh, the businesses? I, our rates for PG&E went up uh, to account for the uh, larger users. And uh, I wanna know if that's gonna be the same case for the, uh, for this new structure? So th this projected 5% rate savings was estimated across all customer classes, including businesses. Now, it's possible that maybe, uh, depending on the rate structure, the businesses might save a little more, or a little less compared to the, the homeowners, but that's, you know, again, to be determined once the rate structure for every single rate class, home, commercial, industrial, agriculture, well, that's all set. So, but that 5% that savings includes uh, savings for the business customers as well. Pardon me, but this, you know, seems like a teaser rate, just like all, you know, cable did it. Now, okay. they're no different than the others. I mean, they're really high. I mean, they just hook you and then there you go, you're stuck, you well, know? Well, except here, you're not stuck. If prices go up, then you go back to PG&E. That's your option. Well, if the council votes for the whole city, I mean, what will that take? They will have to come back and decide against it? No, uh, if the council um, decides to join the program, mm -hmm. you as an individual can opt out at any time. So if the prices go, if, if PG&E ends up being cheaper, you have the option to go back to PG&E, regardless of whatever Individually? The Individually, yes. Because that was my next concern, well, it was like, uh, if a, as a as a group we the council decides for to take the city there, uh, there'll be infrastructure. Uh, you know, you'll be using PG&E's infrastructure in order to deliver this service. That's right. And so, uh, will there be a fee for that? You will pay the same charge you're paying now for the delivery of electricity into your home. The the community choice program only handles the supply. PG&E handles the, the delivery and will continue to handle the delivery charge. Mm -hmm. So whether you're a CC customer or a PG&E customer on the mm -hmm. generation side, mm -hmm. you still pay the PG&E charge on the delivery side. And as a final word for the carbon footprint, um, okay, I understand uh, everybody that we all have to pitch in, we're, you know, do our share, but it was, it's the big polluters outside of the US. I think we're doing our share mm -hmm. and I think we're doing pretty well. 
I mean, we don't have to walk around with masks in our face sure. uh, like some countries. So I think uh, we're in a good place. Um, we're conserving water. And we're conserving all the natural resources. I often say it's the, the best things in life are free, and when you go to Costco, you can get a free glass of water. So and it's filtered, too. So thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to um, kind of mention something that actually kind of counters what you mentioned. So utilities currently, in order to generate enough power to, uh, to uh, I guess, power up a household, of, uh, a household with four residents, it takes 1,200 gallons of water. So um, that's three times the amount of water that that household actually uses. So if everyone consumes about 100 gallons of water and that household needs 1,200 gallons or the utility needs 1,200 gallons of water to actually generate electricity for your household, then it's actually going against uh, what we need to do in California, which is reduce, uh, which is save water, right? Uh, not to mention the fact that folks are wearing a mask over their face in China because China has been producing a lot of products that we in the Western society consume. So we need to think through, and where does that, those, those carbon emissions end up? They're, they're actually traveling to California. Um, so we need to think of uh, it holistically, that our, our planet, it's one planet, and it's common air we're breathing, it's common, uh, and the water we're drinking, we want it to be clean for our children. So um, community choice is definitely a, a better choice. Okay, I think what we want to do is um, uh, thank the presenter, Seth Barouche. Two hours, he's still smiling, he looks a little wilted around the edges, but I, I am, I am um, he was impressed by, by the, the interest, by the questions. We had our cynics, and we had those that are hopeful for a new future, and, and you know, this has just been a great evening. Um, there were some people that were expecting perhaps the government leaders to answer questions. We are still gathering information, and we will be hearing this. Is Alex still in the room? This is on our agenda. Uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, for February the 10th. So one week from tonight in this room, a little later we start, 7 o'clock, one of the first issues is um, whether we're going to be joining this Joint Powers Board. Um, and we have a lot to think about over the next week. Um, all, the all my colleagues were here, and we're still gathering information, but I think we all learned a lot this evening. I want to thank you for giving up an evening, coming out on a cold night, and um, your South City special. Thank you.